I'm Jamie Jackson, spokesman for the Master's Seminary, and joining me right now is Dr. Nate Buznitz. How are you? Wonderful. It's good to be here. Thanks so much for taking time out of your busy day to Absolutely. talk with me. You did a phenomenal sermon on Sunday about the Pope, and obviously with the Pope in the U.S., there's lots of talk all over media and social media. You made an important point, though, about the Pope's role in the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, that we as believers may not quite understand. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting question that a lot of people don't know about the Roman Catholic Church, and that is that Catholicism views the Pope really as an equivalent to the high priest. The Pope is seen as the church's high priest. And one of the ways in which we see that is actually with the Pope's Twitter handle, of all places. The Pope uses the Twitter handle at Pontifex, P-O-N-T-I-F-E-X, at Pontifex. This term actually has a long history that goes all the way back to the early Roman Empire when the Pontifex Maximus was considered the high priest of Roman paganism. Around the time of Julius Caesar, we have the title Pontifex Maximus actually being claimed by the emperor himself and used to describe himself. So now the emperors become the high priests of Roman paganism. That lasts until Rome becomes a Christian empire under Emperor Constantine. He still refers to himself as the Pontifex Maximus of now Christianity rather than paganism. A little bit later in the fourth century, the emperors begin to drop that title, but there's a group in Rome, the bishops of Rome, who pick it up and begin to apply it to themselves, probably in the early fifth century, starting with Leo the Great or around there. So the medieval popes often refer to themselves as Pontifex Maximus, high priest, or Sumus Pontifex, which also means high priest, supreme priest. This is the way that they view their role. They really see themselves as the high priest of the church. So that's a problem because there's only one great high priest and that's Christ. Absolutely. Yeah, so that is a problem. We know from the book of Hebrews and from other places in the New Testament that the Lord Jesus Christ is our great high priest. That's what it says in Hebrews 4.14. He fulfilled the Old Testament priestly system that pointed to him. It was completed in him. It no longer lasts after his ministry, such that we shouldn't look for or expect any sort of priesthood in the church today. So yes, it is a major problem to see the Pope as the high priest when Christ is our high priest. So how should we as believers handle the Pope being in the U.S.? You know, I've seen people who are confessing believers, posting pictures and all kinds of quotes from the Pope, uh, but is that the right thing to do? One thing that evangelicals really have to be careful of is affirming those who represent a false system of doctrine. And the Roman Catholic Church has really deviated from what scripture teaches with regard to a right understanding of the gospel and also a right understanding of how we submit to the scriptures. And there are many other things that we would see in Roman Catholicism that really don't find any validity when we look to the word of God. And so evangelicals need to be really careful before they just embrace the Pope as a brother in Christ when he represents a system that in reality is a system that has strayed from a biblical understanding of the gospel. It has strayed from a commitment to the ultimate authority of scripture. In many ways, it actually demeans the person of Christ through its elevation of the saints, its elevation of Mary, its elevation of the sacramental system, which of course eclipses the gospel of grace. So these are reasons why evangelical Christians, rather than just being all excited and celebrating the Pope, really ought to exercise biblical discernment in the way they think about someone who represents a religious system that, in all honesty, is not biblical. All right. Dr. Busnitz, thank you.